This is a big deal. Bitcoin may be completely obsolete in a few years. How long will it take for us to crack the encryption standards that we use for Bitcoin? Shamoff Polyhopatia says maybe we have two to five years. Two to five year shot clock. And it's because the advancements of quantum computing will soon be able to crack Bitcoin's encryption. And it's because Google has announced their latest quantum chip called Willow. Google announced its latest quantum chip. It's called Willow. Willow performed a standard benchmark computation in under five minutes that would have taken today's fastest supercomputers 10 septillion years. But I don't think there's anything to worry about, and here's why. CTO Larson on Twitter says, the whole internet and our society breaks before Bitcoin does. Which one will be faster to upgrade if needed? Government and bank spaghetti code from 1962 or an open source GitHub repo attended by some of the smartest people on the planet. Quantum computing, if this comes true, can threaten a lot of the established systems. But it's true that which one would be threatened first, all the old banking code or Bitcoin? How long will it take for us to crack the encryption standards that we use for Bitcoin? Nick, <laughs> here's the answer. And that's Jason Calacana smiling very, very gleefully when Shamoth says, how long will it take for Bitcoin to be cracked? Now, if you're unfamiliar with Jason Calacanis, he has been all over Twitter over the last month or so, essentially trolling Michael Saylor and MicroStrategy. He has been unwilling to invite Michael Saylor on the show, and he is unwilling to actually have a full discussion. So seeing him gleefully happy about Bitcoin getting hacked or possibly getting hacked, that makes a lot of sense. But Chamath clarified on Twitter saying, if I owned a lot of Bitcoin, my risk posture would be to assume it could happen and plan accordingly basically quantum computing. He also says any potential risk to Bitcoin can be addressed through forks that implement quantum resistant cryptography for new transactions. No, I mean, I think what'll have to happen is some of these chains will need to obviously re-implement something at a pretty foundational level. And earlier this year on the All In podcast, Chamath did say that he thought that the Bitcoin ETFs would really drive the price of Bitcoin higher. And he was right. But he also admitted here, which is pretty public, he spent $1.6 million of Bitcoin on some land in 2014. Now, this article came out February of 2021, saying that that would be worth around $120 million. Now it's closer to $250 million. And this is Keith Raboy, who was an early stage investor in PayPal and many others. He is saying that we can't even verify what Google is saying is correct regarding their new chip because we don't even have the computing power in order to verify their claims. There's a couple concerns. One is it's not even clear that you can verify that this is true. Standard computing would take uh, right. 10 to the 25th years to verify that what uh, Google analysis is accurate. So there's a right. chance that it's not even true. It's a framework that only a quantum computer could theoretically even So how do you know the answer is correct? <laughs> I guess the and question then, okay. If yeah, it takes be, that long to solve. Yeah. So all in all, guys, I don't think this is a concern. I think that the legacy system, meaning banking and all the other encryption, is a much higher concern right now. Bitcoin is run by the smartest technologists in the world, and they will figure out a solution, even if it is a fork that would adapt to this new quantum computing. Let me know in the comments below what you think about this. Is this an actual concern? Is this FUD? Do you care? Or is this just total noise? Until next time, guys, talk with you soon, and bye for now.